Algebra 1, number 4.1b, we're talking about inequalities in their graph, and we're going to graph an inequality. So a graph is an inequality that is drawn on a number line. It's a picture of all the possible solutions, the solution set. When a number is included as a solution, we draw an arrow on the number line with one bracket, like these boxy brackets, and they face the same direction the arrow is pointing, or we draw a filled-in dot to show that it is included, that number is included on the number line. When a number is not included as a solution, but all the values up to that number are, we draw one parenthesis facing the same direction as the arrow or an open dot with the arrow. See? Make sure you check this video's description for other videos that can help you that are similar to this one, okay? So look at what we've got here. X is greater than or equal to negative 1. We can draw it as either with the bracket or the dot. The bracket means that negative 1 is included because it says or equal to, and the dart filled in dot means it's included. And we draw the arrow showing the direction of all the included solutions. So if x is greater than a negative 1, it's all these values that are bigger than negative 1, isn't it? Because x is greater than or equal to negative 1, we use either the bracket or the filled in dot. Negative 1 is included in the solution because of the or equal to part, see? And it doesn't matter if you use the bracket or the dot or the parentheses or the open dot because either way is acceptable. You don't mix them though, okay? I prefer the bracket because when you're actually writing this out as a solution, you end up using that bracket, okay? That's why I like brackets and parentheses. They make more sense, and I'll show you in a minute. We've got A is less than 3, so that means... A is every single number that's less than 3, but it doesn't include 3. So we have a parenthesis facing the direction of all the solutions, or we could use the open dot showing that 3 is not included, but all the other numbers are. And because A is less than 3, it doesn't include 3. But it includes every value up to 3, including 2.99999, etc. forever, okay? The tiniest micro little number that could go here, if we got a microscope and opened this up so that between 2 and 3 was as big as the room I'm in, we'd be able to see this tiny little, little, you know, millimeter size or smaller, you know, nanometer size that isn't quite 3, okay? So, we use either one parenthesis facing the direction of the solutions or an open dot to show 3 is not part of the solution but I prefer the parentheses, okay? An arrow shows all the included values of their solutions of the equality. So this arrow is drawn everywhere that there's a solution. See? Everything that's bigger than negative 1, the arrow is drawn on it, however big the number line is. The interval is the area that the area is drawn on. That's the interval, okay? and what it includes, you know, because 4 isn't drawn here or 5, but that would be on here, wouldn't it? That would be part of the solution. So the interval is the area that the area was drawn, and it's the values that make the inequality true. So 5 would make this true even though it's not on there, but that would be part of the interval, wouldn't it? Interval notation is the symbols, the brackets, the parentheses, or that open or closed dot that we use to draw the solution. That's called interval notation, okay? And this is the infinity symbol. This sideways 8 is the infinity symbol, and we use it to indicate the possible solutions that they go on forever. You know, infinity, forever, to infinity and beyond, right? This negative infinity, this is the symbol for negative infinity, and we use it to indicate the possible solutions that go on forever into the negative values. So this goes on forever into the negative values. That's the way the arrow's pointing. So this would be negative infinity, see? A bracket is never used next to an infinity symbol, okay? We write it with a parenthesis next to it. So look at it this way. This infinity symbol has a nice, pretty curve to it, doesn't it? So it wants to have a nice, pretty curve next to it. And even the positive one has a nice, pretty curve next to it, so we want to put a nice, pretty curve next to it. We don't want to put a boxy, sharp-cornered bracket next to it, okay? So this is always next to an infinity symbol, this parentheses, okay? But remember, the parentheses also means not included, 
But in this case, that doesn't have any bearing. It just means that it's next to an infinity symbol. Okay, I know this is very confusing. All right, so this right here means that all numbers less than or equal to 2. Because 2 is included, we have the bracket, and all numbers that are less, to it, less than it for infinity go into negative infinity. See? So real numbers include all subsets of rational and irrational numbers, all the integers, all the whole numbers, and all the natural numbers. So we could write the interval notation as parentheses negative infinity, comma parentheses, I mean infinity, close parentheses, see? And that would be for all the real numbers, all of these that are included, every single one, fractions, decimals, negatives, positives. And negative infinity, comma infinity, inside parentheses, would be that set, okay? Now let's look at this one. This is x is greater than or equal to negative 3. So we've got 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. And because it's got or equal to, it includes the negative 3. So we've got our bracket. And because it's greater than, it goes all in the direction of larger than negative 3. See? We could write it with the dot. We fill in the dot to show that 3 is included because of that or equal to. And it goes larger than negative 3. And in interval notation, we would write it as a bracket because it includes the negative 3, comma, infinity, going on forever. So now do you see why I like the brackets and the parentheses? When we write it in interval notation, we use the bracket and parentheses. So if you use the dot and the open circle, it's going to confuse you when you go to write interval notation when you start getting farther into algebra. If you start using the bracket and parentheses on your number line, when you go to write your interval notation for the answer, it's going to be right in front of you. Oh, bracket on negative 3, comma, infinity. Close parentheses. See? Look at this one. We've got negative 1 is equal to or less than x, but x is less than 3. Hmm. So x is in between these numbers, right? So because negative 1 is less than or equal to, we've got our bracket, okay? And that goes on negative 1 because it's included, because it's or equal to. And x is still smaller than 3. So we go to 1, 2, 3. And because it's smaller than 3, it doesn't include 3. We have to put the parentheses facing the direction that includes the interval. So now our interval is only this area right here. That's our interval. It's a short little space because it only includes the numbers that are less than or equal to 1, negative 1, or less than 3. See? So we end up with this little space, and our answer is negative 1, comma, 3. That's the solution for this. We could have written it with the open circle showing that it's less than or equal to negative 1 and includes the 3. See? So that is graphing an inequality. It just means putting it on a number line, and it's referred to as a graph. This is a graph of this inequality. Now you understand uh, intervals, interval notation, the infinity sign, negative infinity, and why I prefer the bracket and the parentheses, okay? And you're going to get into this a lot more in Algebra 2, in the beginning of Algebra 2. So some of this might be a little more than you need, but aren't you glad you know more than everybody else? Okay. I also want to remind you that if you're doing your homework, and I noticed some problems in the book, that it had absolute values so remember that the absolute value is the distance a number is from zero. So if you see this as an inequality, it just means it's read as n the absolute value of negative 4 is less than x. It just means 4 is less than x because the absolute value of negative 4 is 4. It's 4 spaces from zero. So 4 is less than x, okay? All right, I hope this was helpful. I hope you're doing okay. And I hope you're watching to the end of my videos because that's when I say that you're doing a great job and... I'm rooting for you, okay? I'll see you next video. Bye.